The Red Wings offense was in picture-perfect form last night. Kozlov's creative effort and the captain's 21st of the season highlighted the 4-2 victory. Chris Osgood faced 31 shots and made the key stops whenever Edmonton threatened, while Martin Lapointe's top shelf tally iced the Red Wings' victory. Tonight, sharpshooting Tony Amati and the Blackhawks host the Wings, looking for a little luck and a victory. Yes, there's a cold chill blowing through the Windy City. Nothing hot about the Hawks this season. Second worst record in the NHL, facing a Red Wings team that has won two straight and found some offense to go along with a much improved defense. The Red Wings coming up with a big victory last night for their second straight win, and that's a, a terrific bonus for this team. They needed to put some winning streak together. Hello again, everyone. Ken Daniels alongside Mickey Redman. And to that end, when the Red Wings Mick win two in a row, they look to their top line of Larionov, Kozlov, and Lapointe. Well, these guys have been doing a job on a regular basis right now, but Larionov of the three guys is obviously the guy that's the playmaker, the professor, we call him, setting it up on both sides. Kozlov's the tricky guy. He got a highlight goal last night against the Edmonton Oilers, and Marty Lapointe, of course, will do the dirty work in the corners and out in front of the net paying the price. And right now, these guys seem to be as comfortable with each other as anybody on the hockey club. They're going well. Kozlov's starting to score on a regular basis. Igor's been on a pretty good roll lately, and Lapointe's on his way now as he's uh, kind of scoring on a consistent basis as well to another 20-goal year. So that's a line that Scotty Bowman doesn't have to worry about. As comfortable as these guys are, the Blackhawks are uncomfortable. This is a team in disarray. It is. They're in a rebuilding mode. Will Chris Chelios be traded? anybody's guess on that one as we get closer to the trade deadline the Hawks are obviously out of the playoffs he's 35 years old all kinds of rumors about him going to Philadelphia he's a close friend of the big guy Eric Lindros over there the time will only tell I think if uh, he's going to be traded you can bet the Red Wings will be interested then you say is the price going to be too high but this team needs help from Morrow they need it from Jamnoff who probably won't play tonight does they only has 10 goals they average barely Two goals a game, not near enough. Boy, jam not for Jeremy Roenick. Tell you what, you know, we got the better of that deal. Well, coming up next, the Red Wings know that they are 13 and 1 when Sergei Fedorov scores a goal. He has two goals his past two games. That means two wins for the Red Wings. Sergei Fedorov looking for a hat trick tonight, next on Fox Sports Detroit. Detroit Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by your Chrysler and Plymouth Superstores. And by McDonald's of Michigan. Ken Daniels, Mickey Redmond, John Keating, and our Fox Sports Detroit crew with you. Director Jim Marshall, our producer Gord Cutler. As we get set for tonight's game, and yes, Karen Newman, always great to listen to the anthem at the Joe, and same story here in Chicago. Our national anthem is the crowd always gets into it here. Oh. 
Well, even at the new United Center, the crowd is loud for the national anthem, not quite what it used to be at the old Chicago Stadium when Wayne Mesmer's dulcet tones would ring out in the pipe organ, but still a great place to be for a hockey game. Our goaltending matchup tonight brought to you by your Chrysler and Plymouth Superstores. And for the Red Wings, Chris Osgood making his fifth consecutive start, just nine goals against his previous four, and he has been stellar of late. The Red Wings on a two-game winning streak. For the Hawks, Jocelyn Tebow has been steady. Vladislav Tretiak, the former Russian great, has been working with him. Tebow came over from Montreal back in November along with Dave Manson. Two referees tonight. Paul Stewart, Stephen Walcom, Annie McKelman, and Dan Shakti. The Wings have struggled with two refs, but get used to it every playoff game. We'll have two this season. Steve Eisenman. Darren McCarty and Sergei Fedorov start up front for Detroit. Back into the Black Hawk zone. Doug Smolik sets up behind his goal number four. Chad Kilger, Ethan Morrow, and Todd White up front for Chicago. Murphy back into his own zone to Nicholas Lidstrom. He'll feed it ahead for the captain. He'll send one in and Tebow will settle it down. This is a sellout crowd here tonight in Chicago and plenty of fans have made the drive from Detroit to take in this game and a big crew here from Mickey Redmond's group on hand here in Chicago. So you'll hear plenty of Red Wings support tonight. At center, the Blackhawks, big Eric Daze will shoot it in and that's offside with 50 seconds gone in this hockey game tonight. And some notable scratches on both teams, Mickey, this evening. Well, Todd Gill is with the team. Joe Kozer is with the team. Uh, he's not going to play tonight. As you see, Brent Gilchrist skating pain-free. That's good news. Anders Erickson, coach's decision. And Norm Miracle jammed off with a bad back. And Yanni also a veteran defenseman out. For Dirk Graham, Scotty Bowman. Did some juggling last night on his power play. Got some results. Let's see what he does tonight. Whether that's his team. Two for seven last night against the Edmonton Oilers in the power play. Joe Coaster took a uh, little twinge in that groin area, and that's why he's not playing tonight, so didn't last long, and hopefully Coaster can get back into the lineup soon. Jamie McCowan back in for Anders Erickson, who is a healthy scratch tonight. Here comes Doug Brown. Brown across the home strip. His shot saved made by Tebow. Brown will backhand one behind the goal. Chelios bustling in there along with Holmstrom. Chalios threw his weight around, centered in front, gobbled up by Chicago. Turning behind the goal, number 23, Jean-Yves LaRue. Sending it down the ice, Osgood out to stop it. Jamie McCowan behind his deck. He'll feed one ahead to Sergei Fedorov. Tony Amante watching him and hit Amante to the line. Eisenman took a bit of an elbow from Amante, and it swings back. Better off turn inside his own line. The speedy Amante up on the forecheck. Larry Murphy. He'll go rink wide with it. Touched on side. Better off. He'll shoot one in. McCarty can't get in quickly enough. It's picked up behind the goal by Dave Manson, number 22. Came over in that deal from the Montreal Canadiens. Now in his second tour of duty with Chicago. Lidstrom to Murphy. Glad you're along with us this Friday night from the United Center on Fox Sports Detroit. McCarty. Tipped it inside the line. And now into the corner it goes. Manson, watched by Eisenman. He'll send it around as the Red Wings change on the fly. That'll give the puck the opportunity to come up. Ian Golubowski. Coach is obviously happy with his play of late. But with Anders Eriksson, a healthy scratch, and Ian Golubowski staying in the lineup. They'll move that puck quickly ahead to Martin LaPointe. Out there along with Kozlov and Igor Larionov. Flipped into the Black Hawk zone. Turning on it quickly, Mark Jansen, the Surrey BC native, number 20. It'll be backhanded out, and here comes the former Red Wing Windsor native, Bob Probert, across the line. Probert will fire one in off the boards. Scooting in behind the net to get it. Blackhawks control. Smolik moved up. Probert on it again. Watched by Larry on off. Probert looks back for Reed Simpson, number 33. He'll try the other way. Kozlov will pick it up, and he'll send it behind the goal to Larry on off. 16.35 to go here in the opening period. Larry Onoff turns back. Sees his team wasn't in proper position to accept the pass, and now he makes one to Aaron Ward, who steps across center and shoots it in. Tivo out to settle it for Doug Smolin. Now in his seventh season. 
former draft pick of Minnesota back in 89, seventh overall. Good feet ahead for Ethan Morrow, knocked off his stick. Nolik with it again. Pass ahead for Ethan Morrow was deflected. Osgood coming out of the net to play it. No hurry around behind the goal for Aston Dandino. Red Wings will get this puck out. This will be offside as Chris Draper touches the puck. 4.05 gone in a goalless first period from the United Center. Our What's On Tap segment tonight, sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer of the NHL. And What's On Tap, Mick, do you think the Red Wings can get on a bit of a tear here? Well, the Chicago Blackhawks have averaged better than two goals, barely. Just about six goals over two total for 53 games. That's not much. Red Wings should build on that and make it as difficult as they can for the Hawks, not make it easy for them. They should be able to do something with that. Get out of here with a win, and the Rangers already trailing Carolina, one to nothing at home tonight, fighting for a playoff spot. And they get revenge in their mind Sunday. The Rangers beat them late in Detroit last week. And Mike Richter was stellar that evening. Here's a giveaway inside the line, but Eisenman couldn't carry on through. Brought out by number 26, the rookie Todd White of Chicago. Up there along with Chad Pilger, number 15. Eisenman, little head fake, no gain center ice, up with Fedorov. Pass into Fedorov. Knocked off stride, turned back by Jean-Yves LaRue. A native of Montreal, he missed 42 games with surgery for a torn abdominal muscle. The likes of Brent Gilchrist, and Kirk Maltby, and Joe Koser, and many others around the National Hockey League know what that abdominal muscle problem is like. Here's McCarty moving it through to Eisenman. Penalty coming up to Chicago. It's deflected. And the Hawks will be shorthanded as Stephen Walton, one of the two referees tonight, has made the call. Well, interesting that he should make the first call. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get into an exchange here tonight of referees. That's always the biggest concern with the two referee system is that they get into a, a battle of, uh, you know, who's calling what and how many. And, and the Red Wings that doesn't happen. have had their problems with Mr. Paul Yeah, Stewart they the have past. not exactly uh, been endeared to ball. And here's a look at play at center ice. Eddie Olchek signed as a free agent by Chicago now in his 15th season in the NHL and a guy who spent some time in the minors this year but has found his way back up Eddie Olchick has and has scored some big goals for Chicago in what has been a, a disappointing year. Hawks winless in seven. Remember back in early January the Red Wings beat Chicago back to back just prior to that the Red Wings have been winless in seven. And used Chicago to bounce back a bit. Here looking to keep a streak alive and extend Chicago's losing wins. Larry on off to LaPointe. The oh, Cloud had an open net. Boy, this line, as we told you in the opening, has been on fire. Behind the net, LaPointe lets it go. Kozlov into the high slot. Larry on off, pass back. It was tipped. And Oscar will come out to play. Quick puck, puck movement to key there. You see that pass by Larry on off over to LaPointe, and it just stranded. Two hawks right there, no man's left. Here's Kozlov bringing it through to Lidstrom. Now to Eisenman. Make the shot. Kozlov to pick it up. Across to Lister. Into Kozlov. It's moving again, but the pass was too hot to handle. And Chicago will send it down the ice. Both teams changing here. Red Wing power play was two for seven last night versus Edmonton at Joe Lewis Arena. And a four to two victory. Fired around by Manson, hit a leg, but it'll ricochet for the Hawks. Ethan Morrow up to center ice. Morrow up to kill. The Hawks youngsters have been taking a lot of heat. So have the veterans. It's been spread around here. By Bob Murray, the general manager in Chicago. McCarty kicked at it around for Holmstrom. Around the goal to Shanahan. Swept it back, fed her off. Nice spin around the move to hold that puck in. Feeds it back for Murphy. Almost took it flat on his backhand. Got the shot through and deflected just wide. Dase, he'll get there first and he'll clear the zone. 155 to it up. Murphy takes over at his own line. Fedorov knocks it down. The penalty to Olchik is over, so the Red Wings go 0 for 1 with the man advantage tonight. Moving across the line, Draper. His shot deflected off Chelios and up into the seats and out of play. Chelios 
throws it. Well, he threw it nearly. A cross check on Draper and rode him in the boards after the whistle had gone. And then he gave him a haymaker with the glove on. So Chelios, a little bit ornery tonight. The last time we saw these two teams, Chris Chelios did not play with his normal antagonistic style. And Holmes from taking a little bit. The Hawks make the season. And it's not been a good one, as Kenny's pointed out, out of chopping and hacking and whacking and making it tough to play against. They figure how many penalties can the referee call, so they just keep it up. They started early here. Less than eight minutes into the game. No score yet. We'll be back right after this. Well, normally you could phone Mr. Ripley and say, what do you mean? Believe it or not, no penalties on that, but there aren't. Paul Stewart officiating tonight. Part of the reason. I think that's good. Though. I like that. Though. Well, that's good. Well, good. We're not going to have a break. Maybe. Uh, I'm not going to. So you get a free punch in there, there. But if well, you do they'll it the next time. Out. They'll even out over the game. But the point is that we're not going to have, at least for now, uh, a, a trade off of calls by referees and uh, a steady parade to the box. But yeah, Kelly certainly probably should have had one right there. No question about it. Far side for Reed Simpson, who could also duke it up. Simpson spent three years with New Jersey, and he could throw him with the best of them. So the teams remain five aside. Chicago is the most penalized team in the National Hockey League. Draper moving in, and Tebow out. He'll hang on to that one. Chelios right in, coming back. Chelios is our Toyota everyday player on this evening. And you know what? He's just about got a trade room every day. Chris Chelios has said, I don't want to leave Chicago. That's what he said publicly. He has told friends that. Mr. Works, who owns the club, has said, I only want to trade Chelios if he wants to be traded. So that's where they stand at this point. Hawks are not going to make the playoffs. And Bobby Fulford. Assistant general manager and assistant to the president on the left says you, you will probably. I don't know if Bobby's going to Toronto tomorrow night for the final ceremony, maybe the Gardens or not, but I think he would be. Yeah. And Chicago moves on there to play, so. Yeah. The Chicago Blackhawks opened Maple Leaf Gardens with a win back in 1931. Mark Martz, the first ever player to score a goal. Oh, yeah. 50 former Leafs. All of Famer involved in the ceremony. Back to the. And the save made by Osgood off the shot from Pilger. No problem for Osgood there. He had a clear lane, and then they came to the middle. Jamie McCollin, in the middle of that, he's playing banged up, but not 100%, but uh, he'll go in with Erickson being coach's decision out tonight. And see Osgood with a clear lane right down the middle. Not a problem. And then the Hawks just pile in the middle of the net. They're looking for the scrum. There's the veteran McCollin, who contract is over at the end of this year. And he's been reborn really since coming here like Larry Murphy was two years ago. The Red Wings have uh, been through a lot of Toronto defensemen and they have uh, made, a, made a deal out of getting older guys over the last several years. And, People thought that the defense was vulnerable. The two old couldn't move. They showed him different. Sure did. Tebow will shoot it around. Todd White, 26 for Chicago. Knocks it down along the near boards. Scoop free though to Kozlov. Up with the point and Larry on off. Kozlov left it there at the line and Chicago will turn it back up. Ice Chad Tilger. Number 15, he moved that puck through. The backhand shot was stopped by Chris Osgood. Good chance by Nelson Emerson. Game over from Carolina late December for Paul Coffey. Larry on off. Knows his team wants to change, so he'll shoot it in. T-Bone, who had a rough go during his time in Montreal, was steady, but had some shaky playoffs. And thus the move. Better off held it in. And Chicago will turn it back. Here comes Amante. Amante right wing. Added strip from him by Lipson. Picked up though. Centered in front. Eisenman there. He was hooked by Manson on the way out. And up left wing boards. Intercepted at center. McCarty trying to work past Jamie Allison, number 38. He'll send it in behind the goal. And Johnny LaRue will cap it across for Dave Manson. He gave it away. McCarty shot wide on the backhand. Better off tied.
Tallies up his check. Eisenman in to help out. He'll poke it deeper. Hardy in there. Working at the Federoff. Trying to return feed into Eisenman. Puck still free. Look at Eisenman. Go and get it. Back to the point. Murphy got a shot in and wrapped out of the air. Out and down the ice at the Buck single. Olchek going after it. Will it be offside? No. Just the ice he negated. As Olchek got there first. Held in the Red Wing zone. Lindstrom. He'll sweep it away, but Gaze in to pick up the puck. Big Eric Gaze. Getting it back for Johnny LaRue. Watched out of the play by Fedorov to the line. Held in. Chalios the shot. Stopped by Oscar. Rebound scores! Well, good control by the Hawks down in the corner. They just wouldn't give the puck up. And it's a rebound, a big one. See the Red Wings here with two guys down low, Murphy out in front. Here comes Olchek to the front, but Laflamme came out, or rather, LaRue came out, and just as he got there, the puck comes off the pads of Osgood on the Chelio shot, and he went back to the short side where he came from. Right on the ice, not a hard one, barely gets the back of the net. But they'll take it with the trouble this team has had scoring goals. Chicago on the board first. Jean-Yves LaRue had missed much of the season, as mentioned with that abdominal injury. 42 games, so gets number one in this his second NHL season. Had six last week. So Brendan Shanahan with the puck. Long shot. Tebow stopped it. In the corner, Holmstrom. In battle, Reed Simpson dug the puck free. Had it come back to him. To the line, held in by McCowan. And Tebow kicked that aside. Shanahan fed it off the back of the goal. Robert got his stick up high. And Chris Chalios will move it up. Chalios to Simpson. He'll fire it in. here, Rashid and Bang. Smart play by McGowan to avoid Probert, who was on a track. Here he comes after Dandino. Dandino just danced out of the way. It's one thing to finish a check, but how late does that check come? No, there's, there's been a couple of close calls already that they've allowed this go. But that's what that line's out there to do. Simpson and Probert especially. Doug Brown will leave it. He'll head up the wing. Aaron Ward will take over to lead this rush out of the Red Wing zone. Pass was too far, though, for Stacy Roost. He's in the lineup tonight for Joe Koser. Ward took a hard bump. Here's a giveaway. It's on the line. Oh, it's gone. Right in the goal crease. And now the whistle goes. Well, I don't know if the whistle went. We didn't hear it or anything. But, boy, that was close. And Osgood performed some magic as he was split from side to side. Somehow he kept it out of the short side against the goal post. Johnny LaRue scoring at 10.38 from Chris Chelios. Last season, he led all Chicago rookies in points, scored his first NHL goal versus Detroit when Kevin Hodson was in goal here in Chicago and now gets another against the Red Wings. And I remember that first game he played against Detroit last season. He was slashing and hacking. LaRue was, got into it a bit with Eisen and Federoff. Humphrey lays on the first good Red Wing check here. Crowd reacts to that. Backhanded out by White to center. And the Red Wings will take over Aaron Ward to Jan Golubowski. He'll just tip it into the Blackhawks zone. Brad Brown, rookie number two. Flipped it out. Here comes Murphy back in. Murphy looks across. What a great chance as he tried to feed it through for Coslaw. Well, it played that well. That's his job to take the pass away. And he did it at the last split second. Boy, right in the crease. Manson ahead. Great defensive play there for Chicago. Nelson Emerson digging for it. Murphy will flip it ahead. Larry Onoff nearly got there for a two-on-one break. Here comes a Monte. Drop one back. Gilmore in front. Gilmore with it in the corner. Trying to work his way free. He couldn't. And Lidstrom will move it back into the Chicago zone. This will be icing against Detroit.
Plus, stay out of the cold with the Hockey Town Winter Mini Package, including two hard-hitting Red Wing games, including Florida, four days of great college hockey at the Joe, only $138 per seat. Package is going quickly, so hurry to order. Call 313-396-7575. Operators are standing by right now. And isn't it fitting, Mickey, that the Blackhawks will go into Toronto tomorrow night to close out Maple Leaf Gardens with Doug Gilmore being there he basically revived the Maple Leafs in that trade from Calgary that Cliff Fletcher made January 3rd of 92, single-handedly. For the most part, took him to the conference final two straight years. Talk to Doug before the game, I'll tell you that. There's a shot that goes wide of the net. Signed a new three-year deal and leaving New Jersey for $6 million a season here in Chicago at age 35. Flip back into the Black Hawk zone. Chelios will go after him. Sergei Fedorov up front. And icing call and the faceoff will come back into the Hawks zone. So tell me that story about Mr. Doug. Well, I was down uh, Lou Vargo, who's been here with the Hawks uh, for 30 years. Down in the, in the dressing room as a trainer. Went down to heat my food up before the game. And went in to use his micro microwave. And Dougie Gilmore was sitting in there in his underwear just chatting away with one of the other Hawks. How you doing? How you doing? I said, are you looking forward to going to... Uh, Toronto tomorrow night. He said, yeah, you know, kind of. Louis can walk in and he said, yeah. Matter of fact, Mickey said, we're giving, I'm giving away all my jerseys tomorrow night. <laughs> that's Lou's job to look after the jerseys. All oh, right. Spitting everyone, everyone straight up in the air. There's Gilmore <laughs> with a good sense of humor as he's always had, even as a youngster. And now in his latter years, he's always got a, a difficult situation. Quick with a whip. So yeah. he, is, he is looking forward to going back tomorrow night. Though. Back in 93, at 95 assists and 127 points, both are Toronto Maple Leaf records. Look out. Here's a break. White is in. Todd White. Oh, good play. Nice defensive play by McCowan. Good play. Morrow in there to pick up the puck, though. In front for White, and a big stop by Osgood. And a penalty coming up here to the Red Wings. And it'll be Matthew Dandino getting the gate. Stephen Walcom has made his second call tonight. Well, the Hawks have got some life off that first goal. The crowd's behind them here, at least tonight. They haven't always, and they haven't always had big crowds like tonight. What a great play here by Jamie McCowan. He dove, got the puck first. Fans didn't like it, but knock forward didn't even go down. And then here's the penalty. Dandino stick got hooked up in between the legs. And he'll go for interference. So the Red Wing penalty killing unit has been pretty good. The last three games, nine for ten. Hawks going to their first power play try, leading 1-0. You see the power play numbers. 14th in the National Hockey League. Red Wing penalty killing in at fourth best. Doug Gilmore won the draw, but moving too quickly. Murphy and Amate. So Paul Stewart came in to put a halt to matters. The long hair at Amate. Cut his hair a season ago and did not have the season like he did previous. When he had 41 goals and 77 points in 96-97, so decided for luck to try throwing it again. The sixth time in his career with 20 goals for Amante, leading the way with Chicago with 27 now. Here's Amante to the point. Got the return feed from Emerson. Back behind the net, Daze sets up in front. Gilmore back to the blue line. LaFlam shot went wide of the goal. Christian LaFlam, number three. Lidstrom tied up Gilmore. Dase in there to get it. Behind the goal to Gilmore, now to Tony Amate. Back to the point, Emerson, reflected in front. Knocked down by Gilmore. LaFlam to Gilmore again, off his skate. And the Red Wings will send the Chicago back. Scotty Bowman's plan is to use Draper and Malpe to start penalty kills off. He feels with that speed that they've got, they can really pressure the, the power play and prevent them from getting a lot of good scoring chances. That time the Hawks pretty much for, for the outside that whole time. Chad Kilgrim will send it back to the point to Chelios, who has an assist on the first hot goal tonight. The only one of this game so far, and Shanahan will send it back down the ice. Shanahan with three goals his past seven games. Tebow played it around, but not very well. Brown was up there quickly, and Aaron Ward will take it. And send it back down the ice. 40 seconds left in the penalty to Matthew Dandino. Dave Manson will lead this attack. He has a heavy shot from the blue line. He'll use it in the center and fire it in. 
It'll ricochet around. Pass to Monte and past White. And Federoff will pick it up. Out to Eisen. Federoff trailing. Gives him the ball. Oh. And it went past him. Lipstrom high slot. The fake. Lipstrom moving right in the shot. Hit the goal post. Up high. Here's Federoff. His shot hit a leg in front. Federoff going after it. Got the return feed. As Eisenman was rubbed out in behind the play. Look to the boo. And the cheering you hear is the Red Wing contingent yeah. here in Chicago. And plenty of them. In a sold out United Center, and they've been having trouble drawing of late here in Chicago. Brad Brown. There it is. So the Red Wings do a good job to kill off that hot power play. Brad Brown going after it. Gave it away inside the line. Larry on off off the skate. Goes to the point. The point shot stopped by Tebow. Pazlov rebound, and Tebow will hang on to that. Giveaway by Brown, and he knows that he got rushed by LaPointe. He popped the puck away weakly, and Kozlov or Larionov jumped on it to create two scoring chances in a row. Red Wing fans in the crowd here tonight taking in this game at the United Center, making the drive or flight from Detroit. I know you have a big contingent here tonight, Mickey. Big, big. Here in New York on Sunday. Play is offside. Lifted up that back skate. <laughs> As the goal scorer, LaRue, took that pass over two lines from inside the blue line over the center red line. And while we have a chance here, we can take a look at the season series between these two teams. And it's been all Red Wings thus far. And as you can see, the last eight versus Chicago. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem to be a matter whether the Hawks are down or not. At least, you know, outside of the one game, you have some interesting challenges for sure and some battles We've met in the playoffs many times over the years and there's a shot Tebow makes the save and LaPointe let it rip off LaRue Kozlov getting back with him LaRue will sweep it in behind the goal comes around near side as the boards rattle in there Daze knocked it down into LaRue backhand shot hit a body in front Kozlov turns behind the goal. Tried to poke it past Olchik. And it's up and out of play. A couple of notes here. Happy birthday, Kenny, to Dave Parrott from all the gang at Ameritech. Happy birthday to T.C. Federinchuk from her husband, Bill, and Ron and Terry Kim from Jackson. Happy anniversary. They're here. Season ticket holders at the Joe. And also, Red Wing season ticket holders, John and Julie Adair from Jackson. Happy birthday to John. And Stephanie Silverstein, 11 years old today, here in Chicago, celebrating a birthday. Hello to Jessica and Andrew Ashburn watching in Detroit from their mom and dad. And a happy birthday to Sess Frisleybin as well. Plenty of wing supporters here in Chicago tonight. McCowan behind his goal. At the line, failing to get that puck out. Now Dandeno will turn back with it. Shanahan tipped it out through center. 1-0 Chicago leading on the goal at 10-38. LaRue from Chelios. Dandenau will flip it deep. Thibault will come out and settle it there. Manson, head up off the boards. Good pass to Nelson Emerson. On to Doug Gilmore. Gilmore tried to feed it through. Emerson going toward the goal. And tipped over top of the net. Everybody seems okay after that collision. Here's Amante. Back to Manson. His shot went wide. Far side, Jamie Allison to Amante. Brown on Emerson will come up with the puck and put it in behind the goal to Dandino. Shanahan. He'll rag that puck as the Red Wings want to change, so he'll just flip it in and then go to the bench. Tebow will leave it for number 38, Jamie Allison. Spent a couple of seasons with Calgary before coming over to Chicago. Lidstrom. To Eisenman, puck popped over McCarty's stick, and the Red Wings will have to start anew, deep in their own zone. Let's turn to Murphy. Murphy got bumped, better off with a goal and an assist in each of his past two games. Out there, along with Eisenman and McCarty, Eisenman took the pass from Osgood. McCarty in to help, along with Federoff. And 
nowhere to go as Christian LaPlan stood in his path. And he got belted by McCarty, who went on the offense, and he's complaining to the referee about it. McCarty belted him when he was expecting to get hit. Welcome is right there. Osgood will leave it behind his goal for Merck. 15 seconds to go here in the opening period. Nick Litstra up to Murphy. Couldn't get anywhere. Smolik will take it at center. Southside. And we'll have a faceoff with 3.3 seconds to go in this first period. Now the Red Wings give up a goal here in the first period. They didn't want to do that, obviously, with a team that, well, they can explain what I was saying earlier. The Hawks in 53 games have scored 113 goals. Only seven goals. Make that 114. Eight goals over two per game. Not many. New Dodge first intermission report. John Keating in conversation with that man, Chris Draper. And the highlights from this first period as well, which has seen the Chicago Blackhawks at the only goal. As the first period comes to a close here at the United Center in Chicago, where the Hawks lead it. By a count of 1 nothing, shots were even at 7 apiece. That goal, courtesy of Jean Yves LaRue, his first of the season, but out most of this year injured. Chris Chelios picking up his 19th assist. As the Blackhawks lead the Red Wings 1 nothing. Coming up, John Keating in conversation with Chris Draper. Right now, we'll take this time out on Fox Sports Detroit. Ken Daniels back here in Chicago. The Blackhawks playing their 54th game of the season for just the 13th time. They have a lead after one period of play. Standing by downstairs, our man John Keating with the Red Wings' Chris Draper. John? All right, Kenny, thanks. Yeah, the same old story for the Red Wings. It seems that whoever they play is saving their best for Detroit, joined by Chris Draper. Uh, this does not look to be a team that's won only 14 games this year. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we knew that. Uh, you know, I think you throw... Uh, you throw the records out when Detroit and Chicago play. Uh, you know, they're certainly fired up to play against us, and especially, uh, you know, in this building. You know, they uh, they thrive for these kind of situations, and it looks like, uh, you know, they brought their A game, so we certainly got to get a lot better. You got in a little scrum with Chris Chelios early in this one, and to uh, many of our surprises, there was no penalty call. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, I just went into the boards. He ran me a little hard. I didn't appreciate it, and, uh, you know, some uh, little scrum there. So, I mean, uh, that's something that we got to stay away from, though. Uh, you know, they, uh, I, I think they want to get in there and try to get uh, themselves on the power play. And, uh, you know, luckily, uh, th that, uh, that time it didn't work. At this stage of the season, as we chat here in mid-February, how important is it for you guys to get a little win streak going? Tonight would be three in a row. Yeah, it would be huge. I mean, uh, you know, after we beat Nashville, the one thing the guy said right away is, you know, we got a chance for a very good week here. And uh, if we win tonight, uh, you know, then obviously uh, we got a good chance for a great week. So. Two periods to go. We got to start getting uh, a little bit better chances and, uh, you know, capitalizing on our scoring opportunities. All right, Chris, thanks. Good luck the rest of the way. Chris Draper, do not fret, Red Wing fans. The Blackhawks 10, 11, and 1 in games in which they have scored the first goal. Detroit down a goal after one. Ken Daniels back here at the United Center in Chicago. Our next clue in the Who Am I contest, sponsored by the Wellness Plan. In 1994, he became the first NHL player to score 30 or more goals in 15 consecutive seasons. If you think you know the answer, send it along with today's date, your name, address, and phone number on a postcard only to this address, and you could be the winner of tickets to a future Red Wings home game courtesy of the Wellness Plan. There is just one goal in that first period. Chris Chelios takes the shot from the point. Chris Osgood makes the save, and then wheeling out in front for his first of the season is number 23 for Chicago, the Montreal native Jean-Yves LaRue. Who was mentioned at his first NHL goal ever against Kevin Hudson, and here gets one against Chris Osgood, his first of the season, off injured this year to make it 1-0 for Chicago after 20 minutes of play. We're back with second period action next from the United Center on Fox Sports Detroit. Welcome back to the United Center in Chicago. Teams coming back onto the ice for second period action. And Red Wing fans, who's your pick for the McDonald's player of the game? Just call the number on the screen any time during this game and make your selection. If your pick matches ours, you're eligible to win a McDonald's family four-pack and be automatically entered to win four tickets to a home playoff game. Stay tuned to see if you are right. Congratulations to our last winner, Tracy Schwaz from Free Soil, Michigan. Well, not a, an overly exciting period. 14 shots on goal and only three scoring chances. Quality scoring chances, that is, for each team. And nobody hit 
on their power play. Each had one. And then the Hawks up on the faceoffs. Normally the Red Wings are ahead of the opposition in faceoffs. And the Hawks with the only goal of the first 20 minutes. Well, their objective, besides playing better defense this Christmas, which they have, is to improve on the road. They've had their road woes. The Chicago Blackhawks have had their home woes. And well, Kenny, most of this, this road stuff is going to take place the next two weeks, really, with the big trip coming up. And then there's only five games left after that. Well, Larry Murphy had the streak for the Red Wings that played in 177 consecutive regular season games and, and playoffs. 177 in all until he got hurt. And now with Anders Ericsson out of the lineup tonight, he had played in 83 straight. So that streak is gone too. I don't know who's next, but there aren't many who played in consecutive games, save made by Tebow. So I'll have no, to go Murph, back to the books. Murph was the only guy that played in all 82 last year. He probably is the unlikely guy to expect that to happen to him. Mm -hmm. But with, you know, being the age he is and the pace of the game, but boy, he keeps walking 25, 30 a game. Eisenman off the outside of the net. Blackhawks played it ahead. Morrill out there along with Chad Kilger. Osgood will play it ahead for Eisenman. Up to Federoff. Murphy will shoot it in. Christian LaFlam will play it ahead to Chelios. Knocked down at center. Chelios had to come right back to him, had to wait as the Blackhawks were offside and did not get out of the zone in time. Well, Chris Chelios, you see the look on his face. He's a bit sour at all of the goings on this season, and there's the record. And after that, last six games. seven. Yeah. That's the longest streak since April 95 in Chicago. Under the 500 mark, they have not been this far below 500 since Billy Ray was fired just before Christmas of '76. You spoke to Billy Ray at the intermission here. Uh, well, next intermission, go tell him that they haven't been this far under 500 since he was fired. Well, <laughs> he looks pretty good, Billy. Does he? With Dan Bikita, was chatting with both of them, the Hawks alumni box here at the United Center. There are the bottom five out of the playoffs right now. And we should mention that Vancouver has lost Mark Messier. I know John Keating and I mentioned it in the pregame show. Mark Messier gone from the Canucks four to six weeks toward MCL. And if you look at the top eight, Edmonton is sitting at 48 points. So big win for LA last night. San Jose is on a good road trip, three and two so far. We'll see them on Wednesday night. So things are starting to take them. Shot went wide. Yeah, L.A. scored three goals in the final three minutes to shock Philadelphia. Two in a row for Philly. That doesn't happen very often this year. And a goal with just a second or so to go. A bad one that Ron Hextall gave up. That, was, that goal reminded me of the one Colorado scored against Osgood the other day where it, it deflected off somebody. It made him look bad for sure. But a deflection and sometimes the goaltender just did not get readjusted. Three tenths of a second. Osgood will fire it around the board. Slap to the line. Kozlov tying it up. With Chelios getting a penalty here. Stephen Walkham has his hand up. Now Chelios is his normal aggressive self here tonight so far. This really wasn't the last time these two played. And it's been a, a long year for Chelios. He's a veteran player. He loves Chicago. He was born in Chicago. When he was traded here for Denny Savard, after winning a cup in Montreal, as you look at that last play, he pitched in. Gabe, that was the penalty right there. He got good measure in right here. He had a double whack, and he'll only get two minutes for it, but he certainly got his money's worth on that one. Red Wings to go to the power play, though, an unnecessary penalty for the veteran player to take. And a lot of people feel that he will be moved before the March 23rd deadline, maybe at the deadline. Boy, a rumor, rumor making it out of Buffalo. I Doug Gilmore going to the Sabres for Matthew Barnaby? You have to be kidding. That the Buffalo Sabres would take on 12 million over the next two years and add to that probably two and a half for the rest of this season. Yeah, well, Barnaby's been scratched the last week or so. Well, he's asked to be moved. Yeah. Of yeah. course, he did that before. He did it last year. Well, Chicago would have to get more than just Matthew Barnaby anyway. 
Chicago. Short-handed now. Red Wings go to their second power play of the night. Murphy in behind the net. Bumped by Amante. He'll slow it up as the Red Wings get set up. Sergei Fedorov. Back for Murphy. Lead feed. McCarty will pump it in. Shanahan going in after it. Comes around to the far boards. And the Blackhawks will get it back down the ice again. Red Wings are going to have to get somebody going on this power play to the outside. Dump the puck in so the goaltender can't play it and get possession because they're not being able at this point to work it in over the line. Here's the dump in. Tebow slows it up behind the goal for Brad Brown. Hopped over the stick of McCarty and Chicago will send it back. Lidstrom will turn with it. Nine goals in the season. Five have come on the power play. Ahead to Kozlov. Now Weizen and his shot over top of the goal. And Kilger will wrap it back. Gets pretty efficient at that off wing one time or two, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Shanahan early in the year. They'll leave it for Kozlov. Bad pass at the line. Eddie Olchek read that and sends it down the ice. and it'll take it from Osgood. We mentioned Stan Makita and Eisenman catching up to him for eighth place all time within eight points now is Eisenman. Kozlov behind the net. To Larionov, to Kozlov, the point at one side, Larionov at the other, he goes his way. Back to Eisenman, penalty over, Chelios back onto the ice. Sent across, Larionov to the point, oh, Kibo, rebound! Set wide by Kozlov. Slaps the stick on the ice. He not thought he should have had one. And Tebow will hang on as the puck rebounds back to him. Great opportunity by this trio again. Kozlov, Larionov, and the point at the tail end of a Black Hawk power play. The Wings came close to tying up this game, but it's still 1-0 Chicago. We're back in a moment. Want to send out a happy 29th wedding anniversary to Carl and Beverly Fox from Chris Fox in Livonia. And Steve Turner, a happy 45th birthday. And to Wendy Sorensen from Taylor, Michigan. Probert, pass Simpson. Flipped out through center. Too far for Roost, who laid the body on Doug Smolik. Then tapped out to center ice. Draper speeding after it. Brad Brown will get there, and he was in quite the punch-up Brown was with the Coyotes' Jim Cummins, a former Hawk. He gave Brown a cross-check and an elbow. After Brown had earlier beat Cummins in a fight. Reed Simpson at the line just missed a hard hit and Draper carried through and once Paul Stewart got behind the play a boarding call is going against Colbert so Simpson's going after somebody look out here comes Brown Robert's on the ice Simpson three of the heavyweights for Chicago I think it's Bob Probert who's going to the box for boarding Paul Stewart he belted uh, Draper wasn't it two Both of them did here it is. Take a look at it. Here comes Probert. Yeah, Mulpey's there. Hits him a bit from behind. And then Brown gave him a shot, or uh, Simpson gave him a shot while he was down. So it is Probert that's going to go. I would, by that replay, have said that Probert wasn't all that serious. Brown maybe should have got the penalty, but nevertheless, Detroit will take it and go back to the power play here. They're open so far. Well, Dirk Graham's had all kinds of trouble with his Black Hawks. It was a week or so ago with the team struggling at 16 games under 500. Graham sent his own message to the veterans of his club. Returned from Phoenix late Saturday from an 11-day road trip. He called a, a full practice and didn't show up and let the assistants run it. So he said, you guys want to play that way? I don't want to be part of it. Well, I was talking uh, to Probert just before John Keating talked to them in our pregame, and he said, boy, they had a, a two-hour dandy on Monday. Well, when you lose six straight and go winless in seven, things like that will happen. Oslov was bumped by Chelios. Chicago will fire down the ice. 
Two to the point run over. Emerson. You know, that's not a big size sticker. No. <laughs> not even close. Nelson Emerson, who spent four years at Bowling Green. Here's Larry Arnoff turning inside the line to Lidstrom at the point. And a mismatch. Here's LaFont oh. trying to go cross crease to him was Kozlov. And it was blocked as the point was open in his familiar spot of late on the power play. Point's really been collecting power play goals. Here is a chance. Shot scores! Oh. There's another one! What a it's a 1-1 one -one tie as the point let her rip. Did he ever let it rip? What a blast by Marty LaPointe. What a bang-bang play at the blue line. Just on side. Power play goal. What a pass by Lidstrom. Look at this. Boom. Just on side. LaPointe comes in here and he goes short side right here. Beats Tebow. I mean, he blew it by him. Sets it up. Leans into it. Just like that, she's tied. Of uh, Martin LaPointe's past five goals. Over the past nine games, four have come on the power play. So four of his last five on the power play in his last nine games, he's been on fire. And this game all tied up 1-1. The Red Wings were three for 14 on the power play the last three games coming into play tonight. And are one for three now. One for three tonight. Well, that line we talked about in the top of the show, they have been creating all kinds of chances, and they do it again. A point from Larionov and Lidstrom at 5.33. Well, Martin LaPointe has really come on of late. That pass across two lines offside. And remember, you and I always spoke about Martin LaPointe, Mickey, and we said, you know, if Martin LaPointe gets 20 goals, that's a good season for him because Absolutely. he's not going to score like he did in junior, and now he has 14. Now well, we talked about that the other night, but he's on his way to a 20-goal year, and he had a slow start, but the overall picture you look at, and there's the three that we highlighted in the top of the show. Then on a roll. Kozlov with a highlight goal last night, a pass to himself off the net when Miranov went for a skate. Marianov continues to do what he has done for so long, and that's just slow defenses down, get forwards coming from behind, feeding off, making great passes. Marianov now in a four-game point streak, including tonight, 12 points his past 10 games. Here's Eisenman, made the move in front as he was knocked down to the ice. Gilmore got a piece of him. Always interesting to watch the likes of Gilmore and Eisenman going Head to head, Eisenman gets tied up there with Tony Amante. Right there, that pass to Gilmore. That, that's got to hurt Dougie Gilmore. Pass is in the feet, behind him, not up in the tape. You got to break stride. You got to look up. Could be a defenseman there look, look, looking to ring your bell, take your head off. And you know, it's tough for a guy that's as great offensively as Gilmore when you don't get that first pass to get her going and catch some people. It's a struggle because you're beating the same guys all the time and they are allowed to get back into position defensively so you got four people to beat and as a group, you know, team defense against you. And that's hurt the Hawks. Especially a guy like Gilmore to still play. Doug Gilmore scored his first NHL goal against the Red Wings when Eddie Neal was in net. Here's Draper, long shot in and Tebow will drop it for Brad Brown. Rookie moved it out through center. Comes near side. Amante back across ice for Emerson. The shot. Osgood made the save. Murphy to poke at. Moved to the line but not out. Comes to the That's line up. again. Now it came out as Smolik tried to hold it in. Just could not. So offside at the Red Wing line. But Martin LaPointe is tied up this game 1-1. Well, the Detroit Rockers family pack is back. Four great seats, four little Caesar pizza slices, and four Cokes for just $39. Family pack available every Rockers home game, including this weekend's games. Tomorrow versus Philadelphia at 3, Sunday versus Kansas City at 3. To order, call 313-396-7070 during regular business hours or stop by the Joe Louis Arena box office. Nicholas Lidstrom. Looks up as Sergei Fedorov circles. He'll go to Murphy and outlet feed for Eisenman. 
Stepped into by Chalios, but puck goes into the Hawks' territory. The plan put it around behind the goaltender off there to steal the puck. Ethan Morrow stayed with them in a good play by Morrow, the youngster. McCarty in to help Fedorov to Eisenman. Banked it off the side of the goal, looking for a play that didn't work. Ethan Morrow to center. Morrow got the shot through. Oscar made the save, and he'll hang on. Without a good play to make, he'll take a faceoff coming up in Red Wing territory. Now there's been trade talks about Chelios. There's been trade talks about Ethan Morrow. Where it had it that they had a deal that they could make for Stu Byron. Some of the players here apparently were quoted saying, I don't know why they don't make the deal. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? And he's still here. Yeah, I mean, he's very nice. Geez. Come on. How do you think he feels? Not very well. Smart enough to know, too, the OHL Scholastic Player of the Year in 93 and 94. Native of Huntsville, Ontario, Ethan Morrow. There was the rumored deal of Chelios to Philadelphia for Dinah Zubris, and Bill Wirtz came out publicly and saying, after Alexei Shamnoff was such a flop, I don't want any more Russians. <laughs> and he, he's still playing here, too. <laughs> wow. Bill Wirtz has been known to say some things. Yes, he has. To speak his mind. The, the Harold Ballard uh, school of... <laughs> yeah, the thought. <laughs> put you put your mind. <laughs> right. Uh, Oh, well, I mean, hey, he owns the club. He has the right to say what he wants. Here's McCarty. He's staring. A staring contest for McCarty. At this point, three on two. Murphy. Ahead to Larionov. Up there with McCarty. Play broken up at the line. Chicago is really pounding on the wings every chance they get. And they expected this tonight. Watch it film. This is the way Chicago plays. And... Tipped by Larionov to center. Intercepted. Ox Emerson brought it back in. The point in perfect position. Has Kozlov going. Hit him with the pass. Took it nicely from his skate to his step. And swept away by Brad Brown. Kozlov behind the net. Still digging for it. Brown staying with him. Smart play by Brown. Didn't go after the puck. Just stayed with the man. You have to do that with Kozlov. Jack Trapp's going to be hanging off the clock. What a goal he had last night. Playing it off the back of the net. Here now from Pet Joe Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Still. Yep. Point battling in there along with Larry Onoff. No more for Chicago. Back to the point. McCollum's shot was deflected off to the corner. Emerson to pick it up. He'll get it to center. And backhanded in by Tony Amante. Quick feed for Larry Onoff. Knocked down at center. Kozlov will fire it in the rest of the way. The plan took a hit but got it around for Chris Chelios. Into Red Wing territory, and Galabowski, who looks better by the by the game. The bangers are on. Chelios circling the net. Draper coming at him with speed. Maltby moving up to intercept. Back of the goal, Shanahan. Maltby. Jansons can't find it. Nor can Chelios. Bumped by Maltby. Good play. Maltby still with it to make the play. Turning has some room now. Looks back to the point. Aaron Ward is shot. Save made. Puck loose and Chelios will clear at the center. Look at that speed. Watch for Dizzy with great first ball beat. Boy, oh boy. Oh. Fire, they'll go off. Punched into the Red Wing zone and back out. This will be offside as Bob Probert. Still many ties to the Detroit area with Little Daddy's Restaurant in West Bloomfield. Probably was telling me before the game that his wife, Danny, is on her way to Toronto. Of course, the Hawks are in Toronto tomorrow night to play the last ever game at historic Maple Leaf Garden. So his wife is uh, going up to the game and up there now in Toronto waiting. The Hawks will leave after tonight's game to head to Toronto. And How many tickets did you manage to get for that, baby? A few. Too. Not easy, my friend. Not easy, that's for sure. I, my understanding is that uh, I, I assume now this is gold seats in Toronto. Tomorrow night, $2,500 a piece. That's about her right. gold. Per gold. The, the thoughts of 10,000, they're just, they're, the advertisement in the Toronto Star the other day had 50 pairs available. So it's supply and demand. Everybody was holding out. This will be offside. Everybody was holding out to see how much the tickets would rise as it came down to the, the final day. And you know what? Now there's a glut on the market of tickets. People held out to try and sell them. But yeah. from what I've heard, the most is about 5,000 for a pair of goals. 
And that building will remain. It's an historical yeah. site. Uh, the junior teams will play out of there. The St. Michael's uh, Club will play out of the gardens. The Leafs will practice there on days that the Raptors are using the Air Canada Centre, so the building will still be around. I'm hoping that one day they move the Hockey Hall of Fame into Maple Leaf Gardens, leave the ice there so you can still skate on it if you want, and move the Hockey Hall of Fame into Maple Leaf Gardens. Right now at BCE Place in Toronto, I think it would be a great idea. Was the gardens ever deemed a historic yes, site? Yes, it was. It so is. they yeah. can't, basically can't take it down no. unless it was you'd have to leave the facade you know, yeah. and uh it was dangerous many years when the lease price it uh you'd have to leave the facade there was some talk that they may put in condominiums the facade outside would stay the same but that's all down the road <laughs> put in behind the net by white white circling osgood over to make the save john white had some dangerous rushes tonight eisenman at center as Federoff was bumped in front of the bench lidstrom Moving it up to Federoff. Brown moving in. Brown tied up. Cleared out by Chicago to center. Red Wings seem to be finding their legs a little better here in the second period. Tied up this game, 1-1. Starting to take advantage of Chicago, you know, running around and catching themselves out of position. Detroit moving the puck quickly and precisely and creating some chances because of that. Here comes Olchek. Broke his stick on the shot. Out to center, Olchek gets a new piece of lumber and played one back. At the Red Wing line, Daze. He'll fire it in. Oscar will hang on with Daze coming in on him quickly. It's a 1-1 tie at the United Center. Well, this weekend on Fox, the Detroit Red Wings head to New York to face off against Wayne Gretzky and the Rangers, plus other regional action. All starts at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific. Check local listings for the game in your area on Fox. Mr. Bill Ray, Mr. Peter Wirtz, right there. The son of owner Bill Wirtz and Bill Ray, coach brother Dick here with the Chicago Blackhawks when they ran away with the Western Division for many, many years in a row. Billy said to Dick one night, Dick is in Detroit, he said, I'd like to go and stay with my brother, Bill. And, and Billy said, well, as long as you're in by curfew, Dick, no problem. I'm sure. It was an afternoon game, too. <laughs> you made it just for the game, didn't you? <laughs> about what, 3 o'clock start? I know, what, all I know is that we put about a half a dozen hamburgers in the stove, and when we get up in the morning, they look like hockey pucks. <laughs> Small and rather hard. Sliders, were they? <laughs> they wouldn't slide too far. Now we get tired, you know, you, when you read, you get tired. We fell asleep, and hamburgers didn't uh, do too well. No, I guess not. <laughs> but Billy Ray understood. Yep. That afternoon, I think Dick had a goal and three assists in the first period. Hardly touched the puck. Shelly mm -hmm. the shot. Osgood made the save, and another stop by Chris Osgood. Well, the importance of a face-off. Osgood's been sharp tonight again. Look at him out there at the top of the circle. Easy on that one to see the rebound, or to see the shot. He didn't, he preferred, he didn't want to give a rebound up, but it got off the goal pad rather quickly, and he snapped up the rebound as well. So Osgood's been pretty cool and collected through this season. And I'd say at the very worst, Chris Osgood for maybe a couple of weeks was average, but other than that, he's been very, very solid. And the Red Wings have been much more solid around him defensively. Well, I don't think so far. The Hunt had a quality chance in his career. I can't remember one. Standing off. Halsey taken up. Yep. He heads to the Red Wing bench, given up at the line. Here's Olchek looking for some help. His pass across hit Shanahan. And swept out the center by Isaac. Shelley also moving ahead. Fox changing. Off the feet in by Johnny LaRue. Right out of the air, Eisenman. Nice play to send it back into hot territory. Here's Brad Brown, former Canadian to Gilmore. He'll shoot it through, and Osgood will hang on to that. So another faceoff coming up. Mulphy shaking up. We're back in a moment. Steering away as the Hawks control off the faceoff. Now the Red Wings get it out to center. Brown beats better off to the puck to Amante. Bolick was wanting to go with McCarty. 
drop the gloves. They don't yet, and they just jaw. And the linesman in the road, sometimes it's better if they get out of the road. Let them get it out of their system, and we wouldn't have any more delays. I think this faceoff's going to come all the way back into the Chicago zone on the intentional offside ruled against the Blackhawks. To Aaron Christensen out there in Cedar Springs, Michigan. We send out a get well soon. Another note here that seems to have grown legs. <laughs> Won't be the first time. <laughs> no we mentioned kidding. Mark Messier out of the Vancouver lineup for four to six weeks. San Jose Sharks forward Brent Myers suspended 12 games without pay by the NHL for an incident with L.A. Kings defenseman Matthias Nordstrom as Myers was deemed to have left the bench for the purpose of starting an altercation. So a 12-game suspension for the Sharks forward. That's a pretty healthy suspension. He's Matt Johnson territory. game. center among they can't break free this is the late offside now you know it's interesting 12 games for leaving the bench to start on altercation i'm of the mind that uh, would say 12 games would, would belong somewhere else than for doing something like that i mean people don't get hurt normally in fights whether you start them off the bench or not well according to colin campbell the length of this suspension reflects the unacceptable nature of three separate elements of his conduct Okay, so but they don't the, say what, so... Well, they do. Right. Leaving, leaving the bench and the altercation he initiated was with a player who had, in fact, stepped off the ice and is onto his own team's bench. Players and clubs have uh, been repeatedly told altercations between players on the ice and players on the bench are strictly prohibited. So, yeah. you want to crack down on yeah. it, you got to do it. There is uh, Doug Gilmore, who is... A club worst minus 17, second in scoring, but Gilmore is a former Selkie winner. Just reveals the yeah. nature of the season that the Hawks have had. Well, it also, it also tells you too, Kenny, that that plus, plus minus is a, is a, a six-man stat, not right. a one-man stat. This will be a nice Except game. when it works in your favor and you want to use it in a contract. Well, right? yeah, but I mean, you know, to be fair about it all from all sides, it's not a statistic that uh, that I feel is a true barometer of one individual because you can be doing your thing like Brendan Shanahan on the you know tonight I was watching as Chicago scored their first goal Shanahan was watching La Flamme on the far side where nothing was going on but he was doing his job he gets a minus one you know so but by the same I mean, token you can be out there and do nothing on a goal and get a plus one so that's right yeah there has been a move to try and uh, get rid of it but when it can work in your favor you want to hang on to it well sometimes Statistics uh, tell you strange things. Sometimes they're all right, sometimes they're they will be. Here's Morrow looking across, and a nice deflection. Brown was getting in front of Smola coming in from the point. Todd White in the corner. Watch by Murphy. And Brown will backhand it out. Neither team really creating any opportunities here in the second period. The Red Wings have the lone goal. Hard shot from the point. 45 footer. That beat Tebow. Osgood will send it around near board, picked up. Ox Morrill, bumps by Larianoff, White, will tap it through to Kilger. Chad Kilger, his shot is blocked. Wow. And just in behind the net off the deflection. Ethan Morrill, trying to come out front. Chicago applying some pressure now. Todd White will leave it. For Kilger. Cycling it back for Metz, and his shot through the crease out the other side, and the puck will ricochet out to center ice. Chicago sends it back into their own zone. Chad Kilger after it. He was involved in the Timu Solani trade a while back. He was traded to Winnipeg with Trevor Dosky for Timu Solani from the Ducks. Look at this. Here's Kozlov breaking right in. Slava Kozlov, who's been red hot of late, and a great chance breaking in on Jocelyn Tebow. This is what I was talking about before, Kenny. The man comes from behind. Larianov gets him standing still, and Kozlov almost takes the lead. For those pieces. Well, we talked earlier about Larianov. Watch him come up here at center ice and just stop skating. Kozlov comes late, squirts through. He gets the pass to him, almost makes it 2-1, to one, and that's reminiscent of this guy right here, Dan Makita. 
Was he a dandy for the Hawks? Oslov right off the draw. Tebow made the save. Jan Golubovsky. Remember who he had on his side? Kenny Warren, who was a speedster, number 17. Eric Nestorenko. Kenny Warren used to do just what Kozlov did there. Come late, he did a great pass. Down through center, Olchik had his pocket picked by LaPointe. And LaPointe will start in his own zone and bring it to center. Long shot in, Osgood made the save, Aaron Ward will rebound. Ward will angle one off the board, Holmstrom will push it out to center. And push to the ice by Probert is LaPointe. Probert comes up with the puck and gave it away. Look out. Here's a break for Mark Jansen. Golubowski couldn't clear it out. Oh, shot sent over top of the goal by Reed Simpson. Oh, my. He had to just wait. He had all the time and open net. Well, he's not a noted goal scorer in this line out there doing more crossing and banging oh, than the score. Boy, hot fans don't like it. Golubowski, we're getting caught, got a bit of a break. Golubowski tying up Simpson. Aaron Ward can't clear. There's another turnover. Supply the pressure. Well, Pete Sampras, Michael Chang, Andre Agassi had an outstanding field in San Jose as Fox Sports Net brings you the Cybase Open. See the championship match Sunday night at 7 only on Fox Sports Detroit. Well, the Hawks with their second bit of pressure in this period, they haven't had much. Prober, as he normally does, goes to the front of the net. And he delivers blows rather than getting hits. And what a great opportunity. Reed Simpson missed. You're right, he's not a goal scorer, and it showed there. Just a little bit of patience. He had all the time in the world to handle the puck. He let it go immediately. In most cases, that's what you do. Don't handle it, let it go quickly, because you're usually going to get checked right away. But in this one, he had some time and just blew it high and wide. And they had Osgood caught the other side. Lidstrom dropping one for Eisenman, leaving it for Fedorov toward the goal. Backhand shot. Save. And Fedorov had the rebound and just missed poking it home. Murphy to Lidstrom. Waiting. Giving it to Eisenman. Eisenman turning back, being hooked by Brown. The one-on-one -on -one game here. Fedorov makes the move around Kilger. Centered up front. Lidstrom couldn't pick it up. Here's a race. Murphy trying to get back. White speeding through. No call from either official. 20,000 here in the crowd disagree. Fedorov into McCarty. Fed one back, knocked down. The Blackhawks will bring it up. Duck Gilmore across the line. Gilmore. Wheeling it back. Holmstrom knocked it down, and Brown gives it to Holmstrom. Chelios with a little intercept. He's run into the boards by Holmstrom. Rink wide for Brown. Tees it up, and the shot just missed on the sixth side. Emerson poked it free for Gilmore. Who goes after it? They pile up in front of the Hawk bench. And brought forward by Matthew Dandino. Dandino in across the line. Center right through the slot. Amante got it out to Olchin. Shanahan swept it ahead. Chalio's there to take it. Through the gate and he was. Chalio's with it again. Knocked down by McCowan. McCowan across the line. McCowan with room. Oh, and Tebow going the other way and shot it to the far side. Stacy Roos. Center ice. Golubovsky's stick was held. No call. Hawks bring it in. Slot stop Osgood. His best. Big save there by Osgood. Great opportunity for Olchek. And the Red Wings will have a beef as Golubovsky's stick was being held. He couldn't get loose. Here's Aaron Ward, right wing. Starting to open it up now, these two teams. Oslov just missed the knockdown in front. It'll be sent back into the Red Wings zone. We haven't seen Mulpey since he went off Jindal. No, have uh, Yeah. Back into the Black Hawk zone. Manson. Bumped by Roos. Less than a minute to go on a 1-1 tie second period here. Fire deep. Osgood to stop it. Off 
the high glass and out the center. Todd White in front of his own bench, knocked down, swept it ahead. Red Wings will come up with the puck. Nick Lidstrom, backhanded one in. It'll roll deep into Red Wing territory. Kozlov turns. Back for Nick Lidstrom. Draper will pick it up. Draper trying to cut through. <laughs> Bouncing through. Oh, did Brad Brown ever run him into the end boards? Doug Smolik will come up with it. Here's Amante right wing. Amante the shot and just over top. Maybe Osgood got a piece of that. But there it is with two referees and it was almost Paul Stewart wound up acting as a screen there. As Amante brought the play in as Stewart was backing up. Well, the Hawks continue to play the body every opportunity they get. Much smaller Draper goes in with Brown. He drills him, and Amati comes back with a great speed out of the Hawks' zone to get a good scoring chance, and I'm sure Osgood did get a chance of that, or a piece of that, really. Coming up in our new Dodge second intermission, Dave Lewis unhappy with some of the proceedings out there on the ice. Having a word now with the linesman in front of the Red Wing bench did momentarily. So he'll join yours truly and Mickey Redmond in conversation with his thoughts on this game through 40 minutes in a 1-1 tie. The Blackhawks have struggled at home the past two seasons. They were 14, 19, and 8 last year. This season, 9, 12, and 4. Uh, so there we are got, penalties. We got bench minor somewhere. Now McCarty and, and Eisenman are talking to Wacom, which would indicate it's against Detroit. So that's what Dave Lewis had to say, too. So that's why he was shaking his head as we showed him a moment ago. I didn't hear the announcer as to what the bench minor is for. And only the Red Wing box is open. It's probably too many men on the ice. And with 9.5 seconds left, this will be a carryover into the third period. Right off the draw, centered in front, and Detroit will clear. Stacy Roos been there serving the bench minor penalty as the second period comes to a close. So Chicago will begin the third period, 151 remaining in the bench minor penalty. Shots on goal, Shots on goal are 18 to 16 in Chicago's favor after 40 minutes. One goal in that second period. From Martin Lapointe, a power play goal, a 45-footer, his 14th of the season. Larionoff and Lidstrom assisting in a 1-1 tie, offsetting the goal by LaRue in the first period from Chelios. And now, for a look at what's ahead on Fox Sports News after the game, we take you now to the Fox Network Center. Welcome back. Our new Dodge second intermission report from Chicago in a 1-1 tie through 40 minutes. Red Wings associate coach Dave Lewis joining us. And Dave, we saw you just at the end of that period shaking your head and not happy about the too many men on the ice call, I suppose. No, it wasn't too many men on the ice. Uh, he came over to the bench and uh, said something to us, and we just, uh, there was some conversation back and forth, and we got a, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the call was. I think it's unsportsmanlike. I'm not sure what the, the announcement was. And who exactly was it doing the unsportsmanlike? Well, Scotty said something in some of the players, too, so I, I'm not sure who he <laughs> identified, but uh, we're just trying to get his attention, that's all. Dave, you expected Chicago to be very physical from the tapes you watch, which you normally do, you and Barry, before games. Uh, have they played pretty much like you expected? Yeah, exactly. Um, there's a lot of scrums, a lot of stuff after the after the calls uh i can recall one where Chelios got a penalty on kozlov and after the play went back and punched him in the head yeah uh, things like that they're uh that's what they're doing right now and we we're, we we're aware of that our players were told that that's what happened and sure enough that's what's happening you happy with the way your team came out in the second period yeah we we played pretty conservative we're getting some chances now and unfortunately the last five minutes we've given up a couple of chances so we have to make sure we take care of the defensive zone and yet still put enough pressure on them to uh, create some chances, and we're, we're starting to do that a little bit. It, it looks like you caught him, Dave, uh, running around a little bit and getting, uh, creating those chances. Yeah, exactly. Cycling the puck. We had some defensemen jumping in, and uh, it was, you know, it was pretty good uh, cycles a couple of times. Thanks, Dave. Good luck in the third. Thank you, guys. Red Wings associate coach Dave Lewis joining us. A 1-1 tie through 40 minutes here in Chicago on Fox Sports Detroit. Our final clue for Who Am I? Sponsored by the Wellness Plan. This player retired this past summer after 19 seasons in the NHL. If you think you know the answer, send it along with today's date, your name, address, and phone number, and a postcard only to this address, and you could be the winner of two tickets to a future Red Wings home game, compliments of the Wellness Plan. 
Well, we're in a 1-1 tie here. Compliments of Martin LaPointe. Lipstrom starts the play to Igor Larionov. Tapped it ahead, and here's LaPointe from the top of the face-off circle. Great shot. Beats Tebow. Just past the blocker that was outstretched on the short side. His 14th of the season. Four of his past five have come on the power play. Larionov and Lipstrom assisting. A 1-1 tie through 40 minutes here at the United Center in Chicago. Third period action comes your way in a few moments next on Fox Sports Detroit. Detroit Red Wings hockey on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Jeep dealers and McDonald's of Michigan. Here's the statistical story through 40 minutes. Chicago leading in the shots department. Chances are even, and so is the score. And we're back with third period action. Next from the United Center in Chicago on Fox Sports Detroit after this quick timeout. It's well, Scotty Bowman still having his say with the officials here tonight, and there's two to choose from. Boy, he's not a happy camper. And originally, as you heard, we thought it was for too many men on the ice. And uh, Dave Lewis told us uh, it was not. It was for some chirping at the bench. Here it is moments ago, just as Scotty Bowman took the bench. Stephen Walcom and Paul Stewart, the referees tonight, and Scotty Bowman giving them some chin music. Well, Red Wings have had confrontations with Paul Stewart in the past, so they begin the second period one man short for the next minute 45 unless something else transpires here Doug Gilmore who's only played less than 10 minutes or two periods that's remarkable Gilmore is the type of guy who thrives on ice time it'll deflect through and Osgood will hang on but Dirk Graham likes to roll over four lines and Doug Gilmore hasn't seen much playing time but you'd think tomorrow night going back to the gardens he'd probably uh, see much more in the final game there Chicago's Dirk Graham, his team on a seven-game winless skid. And sub-500 at home for the second straight year. It's Denny Savard, assistant coach to Graham. Scotty's still seething over there on the Red Wing bench. You have to walk up looking right on him. Well, if nothing else, he's looking to get the next call, but originally they made the call because of chirping from the Red Wing bench. Yeah, and, and I was told over there in the intermission, Here's a break as the Red Wings bring it through. Draper can't get by. Fred Free just said, never mind what it was. He said it's a bench penalty. Right, that's why we didn't get word up here, so it right. there was too many men. They weren't making the call as to why. Right. Emerson, deflected by Osgood. Amante in there to pick it up. Back to the line it goes, and Daze stumbling. I don't know why they would want to say, what's, what's the secret? It's unsportsmanlike, it's unsportsmanlike. End the story. Kelly also carry out for Chicago. Chooses left wing side for Ethan Morrill. Up there along with Todd White and Amonson. McCowan will back in one high up the half boards. Brought through by Dandino. Away with Brown. And that'll be offside at the Chicago line. Well, we mentioned the Blackhawks winless in seven. And here's a big reason why they are the second worst club in the National Hockey League. Their offense, second last. Defense, third from the bottom. Their home record, nothing to write home about. And their road record isn't either. Well, when you've only won, what, 14 games? I guess you would expect those numbers to be on the negative side. Not a lot of offense. And as we say, trade rumors abound. March 23rd, the trade deadline. And with Chicago pretty much out of it. Something will happen. Whether it's this man going, Chelios, remains to be seen. Up to Morrill. Osgood to stop it. Got it past Morrill. Took a good red wing. Bounces. Sergey Fedorov will come up ice. Fedorov makes the move on Manson, who holds him up. Fedorov fights off the check. Turning. Left it in the corner. Good play when you're shorthanded not to send it back and have Chicago quick on the transition back the other way. Penalty about to expire the bench minor. So Roos comes out of the box. He was serving. Kilger in behind the goal. Centered. Hit 
escape. Chicago still with it. Johnny LaRue has the lone Hawks goal. Couldn't make the play, and Stacey Roos will carry up. Roos with a long shot. Tebow made the save, and he'll hang on to it. I was going to tell you the story earlier. Stacey Roos, one of his few shifts tonight with a long shot. That'll be a shot on goal, but an easy stop for Tebow. He's working with Vladislav Trechak, the great Russian goaltender, and uh, Trechak is trying to get Tebow to come out of his net a little bit, to work on his angles and stuff like that. Remember the game, Montreal and the Russians, 3-3 tied New Year's Eve at the, the Forum? Well, there was a film on, and Tretiak was in that film, of course, and Tebow the next day came in and he said, Vladdy, I noticed that you were back in your net quite a bit. And he said, well, yes, I was, but I was only 20 years old. And I want you to play like me now at 45 with the head I've got, not like I was 20 then. So right. he was quick to come right back as Tebow has been just, I guess, chewing up every word that Tretiak has to say about him, and I suppose he should. Well, Russian European goaltenders did play back in their net then, and that's why, except for maybe Pauli Lindbergh in the 80s, there, there was a tendency not to go with European net miners because they played so far back. And nowadays, you see the likes of the dominator, Dominic Hasek, who's flipping and flopping in Roman Turk, and now there's the tendency, just the unorthodox style from European net miners, but they are coming out. Well, what Trejek said to Tebow was, he said, I learned through those games against the Canadians and against Team Canada and all that. And I learned over time that I had to come out and cut angles down in the right situation. He said, I want you to think at 20, like I think at 45 after learning all those lessons. Because his goals again were not that good against Team Canada. No, the final score was 6-5 in game eight in Moscow. Right. And I think the game before, we, I remember that series, we were down five points to three going into Moscow and lost the first game. And all they needed was one tie in three games, and even a tie, they would have figured, because they were the big underdogs, supposedly, they should have been. They were good. They were good. And we won those last three games, 4-3, 5-4, four, and 6-5. So Vladdy's goals against weren't exactly going to the Hall of Fame out of that series, but he was a great one. Well, it's one of the best after-dinner speakers ever, Dennis Hall likes to say. Vladislav Tretiak and Dennis Hall were at the same dinner one night. Dennis said, Vladdy, you're lucky you let in that last goal by Paul Henderson. Otherwise, nobody today in North America would care who you are. And he's probably right. Absolutely. Made a career for himself, and here he is. Now, did Dennis say that he was, uh, he was wearing the set of hair that night, or did Bobby have the hair? Like Bobby had the hair that night. Here's Amande at the line. Tipped in front, knocked down. Gilmore looking for it. And the Red Wings come up with the puck and will backhand one out to center ice. He's trading license plates on a couple of cars. You can't afford two sets. <laughs> Dennis used to joke about the airpiece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's quite a character. Oslop to Igor Larionov. Gaining the line into Littstrom. Back to Kozlov. His shot got blocked as Gilmore was on him. And Tebow will reach up high and hang on to that one. 16.42 to go in a 1-1 tie third period. Isofano. He'll be my chauffeur to Kalamazoo for the game. Hope he knows where he's going. On that two-hour drive from here. You guys will have your uh, production meeting on the way to Kalamazoo yes, for the will. game tomorrow night. <laughs> yep. There's a shot on T-Ball and McCarty. Well, hang on. Well, well, the Chicago Blackhawks have been under... The ownership of the Wirtz family for I don't know how many years. Too many to remember. There is Bill, who is the granddaddy of them all. Bill has not been in the greatest of health the last few years, but uh, he's quite a character, Bill Wirtz. And of course, he always was uh, one of the first to voice his choice when it ever came to negotiations with the association, etc. He's been involved in a lot of things. Probably wishes the Red Wings could play here for all 41 games. Yeah, no kidding. Well, they do not do on television here or on rare occasions. Here's Tandino. Cowan. Chalios hit Draper. Maltby draws a penalty. So he's okay back out there as we saw. And the Hawks will wind up with a penalty for dumping Kirk Maltby. Tripping call from Paul Stewart. Well, it's Simpson, one of the guys that likes to rough it up. 
Left side of your screen, not much question about it. Paul Stewart not far away, and Paul Stewart hasn't been very busy tonight. It's only his second call. That's okay. Normally that hands up and a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, it is okay. Hawks got a curfew. They got to get to Toronto. You got to get to Kalamazoo. I mean, everybody's going somewhere, you know. You're staying right here. No, no, no rest for the weary. No. <laughs> yeah. Martin LaPointe with the power play goal. Four of his last five goals have come on the power play. Eisenman flanked by LaPointe and Kozla. That's true. To Eisenman. Moving right in. There's a shot that was deflected wide. Let's drop. Point lets it go to Eisen. Or to Kozlov rather. Kozlov sets up. Let's drop. Fed throw. Oh, and just out of the reach of Kozlov as he went to tap it home. At the line, Amate. Streaking out through center. Emerson catching up with him. Amate is turned back. Still with that puck. Nice job by the Hawks penalty killer, Tony Amate. Gets a hand from this Chicago crowd. Here's Lidstrom. To Shanahan. Shanahan across the line, dropping for Eisenman, gets the return feed. A point in behind the net. Chicago with some room now. We'll feather one up the boards and back down the ice. Steve Eisenman. Quick feed ahead for Holster. He'll wire it in around the board, moving up Shanahan on it along with Smolik. Put it through Federoff. Here's Murphy. Shot scores! Bingo. Murphy! What a pass from Federoff! A power play goal. It's 2-1. to one. Well, Murphy just came right into the slot late, and Federoff saw him coming after the dump in by Holstrom. And this is perfect. Here he comes. He's in late. Boom. Left side. Stick side, and it's 2-1 Detroit. Fedorov got a holler for Murphy. Both Hawk defenders were back in, and Murphy came in in the second tier late. And the Red Wings are in front for the first time tonight. Larry Murphy getting his ninth goal of the season. And of those nine, four have come on the power play. So the Red Wings, courtesy of two goals in the power play. And their power play was three for 14 coming in tonight. Big stop by Osgood. Off the quick shot, a timely save by Chris Osgood. Here's Federer. His shot. Tebow will hang on to that one. Brendan Shanahan picking up an assist on that goal by Murphy. So for Shanahan, that is his 400th career assist. And what a save this one was by Excellent. Chris Osgood. Excellent toe save. Threw some legs in front of him. And Osgood kicked that other thing, that thing out with authority. It's a very, very timely save right there by the wizard. Murphy from Fedorov and Shanahan. Fedorov, who had a goal and an assist in each of his previous two games, keeps his point streak alive. Detroit two for four in the power play tonight. Here's Shanahan. His shot is blocked. As we say, Shanahan with career assist number 400. Sent in by Chicago. McCowan in behind the net. Quick feed out for Shanahan. Playing his right wing. Moved it into the hot zone. Draper and Maltby out there. Shanahan goes to the bench. Golubowski. A hard hit. He got flattened. Gotta make that play quicker. Gotta read that guy coming at him and make it quicker. A lot of wear and tear in the body. Yeah, Paul Slava sometimes used to hang on to it long. I think Detroit's going to get a penalty here as Wacom goes back to his job. Or is it Chicago again? We'll have to wait and see. I don't. Chelios looks like he's heading for the bin. And yes, it'll be Chelios by himself. Wow. The Draper, first of all, took a run at number seven. And Chelios and Malpi. Well, he cracked him up in the head. 
Boy, oh boy. Chelios doesn't like it, but an unnecessary play by Chelios. That shows the frustration of the veteran. And if Detroit should score here for their third power play goal, we'd be all stroke. 13 34 to go in the third. Jordan plus skates equals ice. <laughs> Six games has been terrific. Virtually one out of every four goes into the net. Moved ahead to LaPointe. So the last three consecutive goals by the Red Wings have been on the power play. LaPointe is hurt. LaPointe closed out the scoring with a power play goal versus Edmonton. Opened the scoring tonight on the power play, and he's slow to get up. Manson with a heavy check, hip check on LaPointe. And what happened here is he was trying to make the play at the blue line. He held on to it, held on to it. See him trying to make the play, and he sacrifices himself. You see that? Oh, boy. Left leg right there. As Manson went in with the hip first, and the point, his favorite the left knee as he gingerly hits for the bench with John Horton. Seems to be going pretty much under his, well, trying to put some pressure on it. That's a good sign. Yeah, when you... You're vulnerable when you're trying to make a play like that. You got a big guy like Dave Manson. Boy, that's when you can get hurt. Red Wings have had more than their share of injuries in the last couple of months. See the point going down, but that looks like he's going to be sore for a few days at least. Well, the last three Red Wing goals have all come on the power play, and four of their past five have been with the man advantage. So, trying to make that play, you can't protect yourself. You're vulnerable. To that. Here's Lidstrom. There's a shot, and Tebow flexing made that save. Eisenman. Better off. Eisenman again knocks it down. Two to one Red Wings. Chicago goes to the power play. Watch this play. Watch McCarty here. Checks off. He's got to come and get White as Dandino comes to the shooter. Old check gets a piece of him right here. Doesn't really drive him into the net, but enough of it for Paul Stewart to make the call and put the Hawks on the power play. Chicago's power play has struggled like the rest of their story this season. Here down two to one. Probert tied up. Checked by McCowan Amante. 
Here's Gilmore, left point. Fed through a lot the shot high and over top of the goal. Malti able to sweep it ahead. Christian LaFlam will turn. Amon Hale tip it through. Covert in there against Murphy, who's given Detroit a two to one lead. LaFlam shot a throw. Oscar made the save that hit McCowan in front. And Oscar was quick enough to stop. Some big stops Osgood has tonight. Oh, yeah, in front of the bench. Who's he going after? Mulphy. Who else? Just Mulphy is trying to make a, 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 a change, and Paul Stewart's going to go with who? Both of them? I think so. Robert had his arm around Mulphy's neck as he was halfway in the Red Wing bench. Now, Paul Stewart is signaling for Robert to come over. The fans here don't know it yet. Yeah. Robert will join him. Well, in Stewart's mind, and Mulphy did something before he got to the bench, that's for sure. So the 33-year-old Probert goes into the box. I think Chris Oskin has come up huge tonight. Shot on goal, 24-21 in the Wings' favor. Well, there's the second big save that Osgood's made since the 2 1 Red Wing goal. This one bouncing and banging around in front. Two minutes of structured tripping. The life of a goaltender. Osgood not really excited about anything right now. Just keep going. Oh, time for a smile in the penalty <laughs> box in the middle of this mayhem. He got obstruction tripping. Probert got roughing. And still 114 left in the penalty to Darren McCarty. So the offsetting minors still five on four advantage for Chicago. So McCarty and Probert, the two who are in a, a restaurant venture together in Detroit and West Bloomfield are both in the penalty box together. Murphy just got a three point field goal all the way from his own inside his own blue line. Well, the Chicago offense led by Tony Amante with 27 goals, and he's competing for the new trophy this year, the Rocket Richard Trophy. LeClaire stuck on 33 right now, leading the league. 34 now. 34? Yep. Get, we just got one last night then. Lindros yep. with 32, Naslin with 29 along with Robitaille, and then Amante with 27. Here's Lidstrom. Up by Chelios. Daze in to help out. Through to the far side of Monte at the line. Intercepted. Oh, Gilmore just held it in. Oh, my. Gilmore almost blocked it twice. Eisenman will carry up along with Federoff. Eisenman shot deflected wide. He'll go to the bench. Jalios bumped into Gilmore. Not tough, is it? Emerson dropping. And tomorrow, one shot, two shot, three shot, third one on Osgood. The whistle goes. He blew right over top of Osgood. Will he get a penalty? Draper, who roomed with Osgood for four years, took exception to that. And Osgood looks like he's okay. And the Hawks come to the net. Morrow with a rip. He keeps on coming. Gets a second opportunity. Osgood back up, back down, and right over top of Chris Osgood. With 17 seconds left in the McCarty penalty and 926 on the clock and a 2-1 Red Wing lead. Well, Andy McKelman certainly gave Morrow a little shower was putting on the brakes. Wings out shooting Chicago 31-23 to this point. Red Wings have really picked it up since the beginning of the second period. Somewhat sluggish start. Behind the goal for Manson. Rink wide feed. Kilger picking it up. Chad Kilger bump. Puck is free. Oh, it's going to save. Well, robbing Nelson Emerson to keep it a 2-1. Red Wings lead. Oh, my, did he ever make a big one there. Holy smoke. Matthew 
Dandeno came flying forward like he was shot out of a cannon. And they were, <laughs> holy mackerel. They got Ward's over there. When Dandeno comes over to play Kilger, Emerson's got a free lane to the net. He tried to get cute and go to that elusive five hole, and it wasn't there. Boy, when you go into the net, you can't be too easy with the shot. You try to get easy on it and cute and pick a little spot. A goaltender is going to make you look bad. You got to bear down and flow it through him if you can't put it around him. And Nelson Emerson learned that right there. If he hasn't before, and I'm sure he has. Boy. Nelson Emerson, who spent four years at Bowling Green, ended his NCAA career as the CCHA all-time leading scorer from 86 through 90. I've seen Toe Blake in Montreal bench Yvonne Cornway for making a play like that on a breakaway. If you got to bear down around the net, and absolutely, you have to break your stick trying to put it in the net. Never be soft with a goal tent. And he set him on the bench for it. Dan learned pretty well, scored a lot of goals. <laughs> Won a lot of cups. Yes, he did. Couldn't see the point out there. Here's Morrow. His shot went wide. Chalios will rebound and shot out the other side. Held in by Allison. And Red Wings sent it to center. Larry on off. Lost control at the line, hooking Emerson. Played it off the skate. Cowan is there. Tula Point, who's okay, who will shoot it in. Red Wings changing. Smolik. Check, let it go through. Shanahan, nice play there. Brought in by Federoff. Eisenman in front, pass back. It was nowhere near him. Right point at a very quick shift. We have to see if he comes out again. I don't think he will. I think that he has bothered him too much. With 7.55 left in the third, it remains 2-1 to one, Red Wings. Bulls here in Chicago, and this will be a rougher season for the Bulls. <laughs> a wee bit without Mr. Jordan. But they've had their fun. As you can tell, the evidence of it. Where's Rodman end up anyway? In a dress. <laughs> what part is that? <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Now, you know one of the guys downstairs, Stu Green? Big fisherman up in the grayling area of the Osabo. Wanted to say hi to all the gang. And Froggy's out there watching the game tonight, having a few ginger ale. I hear that's quite more spot. Right? And his fishing guy, Craig Perry, is going to be right at the end of the bar. Beautiful. Leading the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Raise one to Mick right now, won't you? And a hi to Jim and Linda Bardis in Riverview from Kerry. And she notes here, we made it, Mom. Go Wings. Always great support for the Red Wings, especially in Chicago, St. Louis, Toronto, both cities to Detroit. And it, it, you look around this building, almost like half of it has got red and white jerseys on, and they're not Chicago red and white. Mm -hmm. Shanahan tying up Morrow. Dandino moved in. Eisenman knocked it out of the air. Right there along with Federoff and Shanahan. Todd White will backhand it out to center. here having a friendly rivalry those from Detroit and those from Chicago with the varying chance Dandino turned back went down Kilger was on him and this flipped up into the seats sent out a play with 705 to go here in the third period well if you want exclusive interviews photos and the inside story in your favorite Red Wings you can't miss with the official magazine of the Detroit Red Wings, Inside Hockey Town. Subscribe now and you'll get seven exciting issues delivered right to your door for only $28. 313-396-7575 is the number to call to order your Inside Hockey Town. Subscribe now and you'll get seven exciting issues delivered right to your door for only $28. Call 313-396-7575 to order your Inside Hockey Town subscription today. Yes, Mark Sports Detroit fans, as we say here, Chicago. Well, Chicago doing home games. You know they're watching Fox Sports Detroit tonight to see this one. Wherever they have a dish. Draper. Into the corner. And the 
puck underneath for another face-off. And with that, we'll take a timeout with 6.39 to go. Goes wide. Held in by Allison Gilmore. Number 93 in the corner is Bump. As Draper got a hold of him. Amante poked it deep. Gilmore behind the net to Amante. Off his skate. Oh, and carried right out of the goal. Race in close territory. That puck many times. Wave off the icing here. Hardy just got it away. Allison mixing it up. Along with Mulkey. Who else? <laughs> he jumped Manson on the way by. Oh, oh, favor. Oh, he didn't get the nickname Charlie for nothing. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. He's been hacking and whacking here pretty good. I mean, a BC 200 to Dave Manson is like getting up in the morning and having breakfast. Like, <laughs> he does it every day. <laughs> look at the look on his face. <laughs> Now in his 13th season. And he's talks very funny like two. You know why? That can't was not any better than that. That was the Momesso punch in the larynx yeah. while with Edmonton, and he lost 20% breathing capacity. He's, to have that, you've seen a number of doctors about it slowly getting better. But nice guy. I mean, he's a great yeah. guy off the ice. You ever talk to him? I mean, All hockey he's players are great guys off the ice. He do get into some mood. Eyes get red, nose swells up, like, oh, get out of the way, man. Since on the ice, he's on a tear. Sort of like you when you get angry. <laughs> that was Brother Dick. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just hit him over the head with the broom a couple of times. The road <laughs> hockey league. That's he ran like up. heck. That's where the saying goes. Keep the Louisville up for protection against those guys, you know? Yep. The equalizer, my dad used to call it. The equalizer. Real quick. Even tough guys don't get like that. All check. One game we're getting Brother Dick on here for an interview. I want to hear his side of the story. Came loose into the slot. And knocked out the center. And a penalty coming up here to the Red Wings. As it was uh, Olchek knocked down beside Chris Osgood. And Paul Stewart made the call. Chicago's going to go to a power play. Here's you, why. You be the ref here. That's it there. Holy smoke. Wow. Well, mixed families here. Here's Dick. Dick's there. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Detroit number 17. Oh, look at this one more time. You be the judge. Now, I don't know that this is the call here. What's the collision here? No. I mean, no, it's that one there, but it's the second one. It's Doug second Brown. Second one, Doug Brown? Yeah. Holy smoke. Boy, I don't know about that. Well, he, I don't know. That, that angle, anyway, it looked like a... I've seen worse collisions made than yeah. that one. A, a collision is much better than else. Not that Scotty Bowman would agree tonight. No. No, he wouldn't. He'd like some called the other way first. That's what he's, he's saying. Up. Why aren't you calling those and then you're calling that? Boy, he's, you think he's wound up tight. Boy. He's going pretty good. Yes, he is. So far, Paul Stewart to go. Off the draw. Off the skate. Of LaPlan, better off there. Doesn't get it out. LaPlan with the point. The shot went wide. Him and he'll sweep it down the ice. Tebow to leave it for Christian Laflam, number three, in his third season. Amante. Daze. Todd White on Litzkin. We'll poke it to the corner. Amante jams better off in. Twice he comes up with the puck, and Murphy should easily clear. Boy, oh boy, Lipscomb does it, makes it look so easy. Monte with a good pass for Emerson. Now to Gilmore. Gilmore, punt. Chalios to a Monte. Oh, punt and hold it in. Wow, that's a big break for Detroit. Gilmore will shoot it in again. But with Chicago changing the Red Wings, able to clear. Kilger. Chalios to pick it up. Just missed a hit from Draper. Gilmore, left point. He'll shoot. Oh, off the outside of the net on the deflection. Back to the point. Chalios to the corner. McCowan stumbling. We'll get there first. Couldn't clear hit. Kilger. Second drive. Hope deep. Moral 
couldn't get it. Murphy will. Long shot on Tebow. Oh, my. Underneath him and up the other side. Why would he play that like that? Gretzak couldn't have caught him that. we will go back for another oh. lesson tomorrow. Oh, my. That's dangerous. Sir Grant. Well, at least he wasn't far back in his net. Going to be losing more here. Here toward the goal. Nice coach check by Oscar. What a stop! Oh, oh Oscar, what a save! Joe. The save of the night, Agdazi, to keep it two to one. That's incredible. Wow, with three and a half to go. Unbelievable. Half length reflex flexes there by Chris Osgood, yes. and he'll hang on. It's the wizard show tonight, boy. What a stop! 3.23 to go off a Hawks power play. Osgood comes up huge. Discover card payback playback just seconds ago. Chris Osgood with a sparkling save on Eric Daze after a good poke check. Here it comes right here. That's a smart heads up play by Osgood. Boy, he's been spectacular here in the third since the score's two to one. He has made five huge saves. Boy, Scotty is not letting up. He'll be hoarse when this night is over. He's got the medicine for it. It'll be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll be happier here if the Red Wings can hang on. Chicago pressure. Morrow swept away. There's Lipstrom again. Boy, his play has really picked up of late. Morrow. Good takeout by Lipstrom on Morrow. Puck will come free, though. Sent toward the goal. Osgood, another stop. Shanahan will put it ahead perfectly to Fedorov. Fedorov one-on-one -on -one play, drop back. Eiserman, nice fake, right in, and Tebow will make the save as Eiserman ran out of real estate. Hawks getting crossed up on their breakout. They'll turn back. Jamie Allison moved it across. Manson up. Gilmore, the shooting. Oslock couldn't pick it up in the corner. Cowan will poke it ahead. Larionov makes sure it clears the zone. Smolik in a race along with McCarty. McCarty takes him right into the end boards. Gilmore in perfect position to take that pass. He'll wheel back. Outlet feed to Brown. 2-10 to go here, third period. Detroit leading 2-1. to one. Here's Larionov here. Popped over his stick. Two power play goals for the Red Wings tonight. Igor gets a stick up there. He knew Brown was coming after him. Gilmore scampering out to center. Gilmore can't bust through. Osgood will put it around the boards. Amate getting over there first to the corner where Gilmore's heading with McCowan. A couple of former teammates who both came over in the trade from Calgary. It's up for Tebow any time now. Be turning. He'll angle one into Black Hawk territory. Tebow will sweep it to the corner. Maltby moving in on it. Got bucked hard in there by LaFlan. Chicago will flip it out to center ice. A bouncing puck handled by Lipstrom. 1.15 to go. Third period. Murphy will step across center like a, a good veteran would to make sure there's no ice. Gotta come down. He's edging out. Here's a breakthrough to Olchek and just offside. Well, they might pull him anyway with a face-off at center ice. We'll wait and see. I imagine we'll get a timeout. Minute four here to go. Well, coming up, immediately following our game tonight on Fox Sports News, we'll have a Shaq injury update for you. Uh, the De La Hoya weigh in. We'll have that as well as the complete NHL story. And as we mentioned earlier, Mark Messier out four to six weeks with the torn MCL. The Canucks in deeper trouble now than they already were, even... No, well, Messier wasn't having a Messier-type season. He's been hampered by injury now the past few years. So Tebow will look to go when the Blackhawks can get this puck deep, and if they can, into the Red Wings zone. Detroit leading it 2-1. to one. Power play goal by LaPointe and Murphy. In the third period. Moral, Tebow going. Red Wings with it, will flip it out. Tebow on the bench, sixth attacker for Chicago. Less than a minute to go here. Amante, that'll be offside. Oh, boy. 
Got to go in with it. Morrow thought he was going to shoot it in. Amante held on to the puck. Chicago had a 1-0 lead in this game, but Detroit answered with a couple of power play goals to lead 2-1. 45.9 seconds left. Chicago winless in seven. Coming into this one tonight, the Red Wings had won their past two. It'll be tough, Denny Savard. And on the near side of Dirk Graham there. He was a quite a performer for many years here in Chicago. Angled off the glass, out the center. Better off, shot it through. Chelios there to block it. Here's Murphy, he'll gain center. Shooting it through, knocked down. Manson will turn one back to Chelly. 30 seconds to go, third period. Amante, left wing. This time he'll shoot it through. Osgood there to stop it. He'll play the safe one off the boards. Kilger tipped it, held it in. Lidstrom will try again. Kilger blocked again. Had it and escapes. Fedorov there to read the play. Beat Gilmore to it. Send it around. Amante steals. Lidstrom there. It'll angle back for Eisenman. Poked out. Shanahan after it. Loose for Murphy, overskated. Gilbert tapped it back, and this game is over. The Red Wings have won three in a row. The Blackhawks are winless in eight. The final two to one, Detroit beating Chicago. Well, the Wizard getting a tap on the helmet from his teammates, and well, well deserved, boy, after. The Red Wings took the lead two to one on Murphy's goal. Chris Osgood is without a doubt our McDonald's player of the game. Remember, if you choose the Wizard, you're eligible to win a McDonald's gift certificate. Join us Wednesday against San Jose Joe to see if you are the lucky winner. Chris Osgood will undoubtedly be the number one star in this building. He made five spectacular, timely saves in the third period to preserve this victory for Detroit. And Martin LaPointe with one of two power play goals. Murphy with the game-winning goal also on the power play. This little Red Wing fan can go home happy at 2-1 to one victory. Reminder, our next game here on Fox Sports Detroit comes your way Wednesday as the Wings host the San Jose Sharks. Fox Sports Detroit Red Wings pregame on air at 7. Game action to follow at 7.30. For my partner, Mickey Redmond, this is Ken Daniels saying so long from the United Center where the Red Wings win at 2-1, to one, their third straight win. You've been watching Detroit Red Wings coverage on Fox Sports Detroit. Detroit, your home of Fox Sports Net. Osgood Spectacular. Stay tuned for Fox Sports News Primetime.